Hi, my name is Paul DeAngelis, part of the Tottenham Supplement, and this is my rants. Okay, we've had a bit of a dodgy time lately, two back-to-back -back losses, um, something that certainly I can't remember in my time as a Spurs fan, and that's having no shots on target in the last game, um, just not acceptable. So where is it that I think we're really going wrong? I broke this down into... Uh, after a lot of deliberation, I broke it down into a number of sectors. Obviously, your defence, the width, etc. Where's it going wrong? Um, okay, so we've suffered. People might not agree with this. We have suffered since Carl, Carl Walker departed. All right? Okay, now, okay, he wanted to go. I understand that. We can't keep players that don't want to stay there. But we haven't replaced him like for like. And whilst he wasn't the all-round player and his attitude wasn't always the best, one thing that we did when we had him was we had a high-pressing, fast-pushing game. All right? When it was uh, Walker and Rose playing at back, we had them charging down the wing, supplying crosses into Kane. All right, um, and and it it didn't give our teams time, the other opposing teams time to uh, to see what was happening. Right, it was fast, it was attacking, it gave the game ultimate width, and we need, we really need that wide uh, wing back position, and I think that was proven when we saw Vertonghen in that role. What a game he had, all right? Um, uh, we had lots of speed, lots of pace. The teams didn't understand how to get there. Um, it's always easier to charge and attack and cross from the wing than it is from feed it through a, a busy midfield. Uh, teams couldn't cope with it. They couldn't cope with the speed. Um, the field was less cluttered, so he was, he was. they found it easier to get back to their positions when they needed to, which is something where we've been caught out a lot on the break as well this season. Um, and it's, it, we just seem to have stopped that whole game. Our game nowadays seems to be side to side, lots of passing back. You know, we get in position and we get possession just outside the penalty area. And, we, you know, within the blink of an eye, all of a sudden we're passing back in our own half. When did that ever become part of our game? You know, it, it shouldn't. It's boring. It's, and, and we get dispossessed. And it's just, it's not creating anything. When you're playing like that, it's no wonder that you know you, you you're not you're not creating the chances and having a single shot on target. Um, something's not right in defence. It's I think that's clear to say. I don't honestly think Pochettino knows his best defence at the moment. That's why he's tinkered. Um, we've we've not really seen the best from Aldo Um Too many sloppy mistakes. All right. I mean, the vast majority of goals this season, certainly, I would say most of the goals in the second part of the season have come from sloppy mistakes. And you know you shouldn't be letting goals go in. As part of mistakes, you know, they're not outstanding work from strikers. They're not where we've been genuinely caught. Well, these are silly goals that we've let in, and and, and they've been defensive mistakes. And some of them have been quite embarrassing. No, didn't none more embarrassing than the other day, of course, with with Luis and Trippier. But um, you know, it's it, we're seeing too much of it, and and, and something has got to stop. I understand Foyth is still uh, learning his craft. Uh, I actually like the guy. Um, I think he's he's a young guy who, who who needs game time, and I think we should persevere with him. But certainly, these mistakes have got to stop, you know. And they're, and they're coming from all 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 sides of the pitch, you know. There's there's no one, even out of Real, there's no one really that's not not to blame in our defence at the moment. Um, it just can't go on. And I think testament to the fact that what I'm saying about uh, an evidence of what I'm saying about the defence is being a big problem. In the 2016-17 season, we shipped 26 goals in the whole season. All right, we're the best best defensive record. All right, we've already done twenty six this year, and we've got ten games still to go. People, all right, something's not right. Something's really not right there. Um, now, whether the players that have been brought in are just not up to scratch, I don't know. But certainly, I would like to see us going back to to finding some some strong wing backs, or even play, you know, play Vertonghen in that role more. You know, he he played in a blind. I'd love to see it to, to see if he could replicate that. Um, but either way, our defence isn't isn't what it should be, and I think that's the crux of our problem. Um, it, yes, you score goals, all right. Yes, you score goals in order to win games, but something we haven't done this year is draw. And I think one of the reasons we haven't drawn is because we've shipped goals. Simple as that, all right. If you can't win a game and nothing's happening up front, well then you grab a point out of a game. You grab a point, you need to not concede. We need to look at our defence. I think Poch doesn't know what his best defence is, and I think we need to bring some defensive players in. Alderweireld, I'd like to probably commend him, actually, because I think even though he hasn't signed his contract, um, you know, and it looks like he's off, he has remained professional. You know, he hasn't down tools and not played. 
Um, I don't think we've seen the best out of him by far. He hasn't been a, a touch on the player he has been in the past. However, you know, he's done all right. He's done all right. And, um, you know, he's kept tweeting his support for the guys. He seems to have given his maximum performance in the matches. So, you know, I don't think the blame's there either. But, uh, you know, since Carl Walker's gone and, and we've had a lack of Rose playing as well, I really think we've suffered. And we need to look at that, yeah? Certain players strive. Uh, Kane, for for example, he's the kind of player who will, who will he'll work very hard, but you put the ball on his foot from, from the cross and he'll stick it in. It's as simple as that. And we haven't seen those goals coming this year. Um, width, width of game as well, you know. I mean, we're feeding it through and doing too many silly little passes in the midfield area, you know, and then passing back. Um, one possible answer. Now, I was a big Lamella fan, and I don't think he's... He hasn't lived up to his potential at all. I was very excited when we signed him. He was a good, a very good player. And I believe that somewhere in there there still is. He's played all over the place, right? He's he's put in left, right and centre. Um, if you look at his best games, go on YouTube and have a look at his best games, right? His best games at River Plate and also at um, um, Roma, he was very like much like Bale, all right? He used to have a fast run down the wing and then he'd cut in. He'd cut in and score. And he used to, he used to bang them goals in. All right. As it is, we've been impressed by Rabona, and that's been about it. So I'd like to see you know, him, him work at his game on the wing, and perhaps maybe if we haven't got any other options, start playing him as a winger and giving him regular starts as a winger. And let's just let's see if he can replicate the form that he had at, uh, at his previous clubs. Um, forwards, Kane, of course we've had injuries. You know, We know we've had injuries. You, what can you say about him? He, he works extremely hard. He does work extremely hard. And... I don't think we've seen the best out of him this year, but however, he's 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 still got goals. He's still you look at his tally, he's still scoring and knocking them in. So, you know, he is doing his bit, but he needs supply, he needs service, and we're just not creating anything for him. Um, Son, I hate to say this, and I'm not suggesting we drop Kane. However, hands up, who thinks Son's game has been affected since Kane returned? I do. All right, he's not as fast, he's not as pacey, he's not as creative. He seems restricted in his area. Um, and I think that if a game's not going well, it's not working with those two up front, let Kane drop back a little bit. Pull him back a little bit because he does work hard. He works very hard off the ball as well um, and he works hard to create things. He's a, he's a, he's a fast player. He's a, he's a very skillful player. A lot of people think it's all about the goals with Kane, but anyone that's watched watched Spurs, you know, uh, for real and not not you know not on television we'll see just when the camera's not on him exactly what work he puts in so pull him back pull him back a bit and give son a free reign up front he's a bit like defoe he'll create a goal out of nowhere son and he's a lot better than a lot of people think um he's he, his game is more about more than just those fast runs right he's very very skillful on the ball and he's he's good with his angles he's very cute um at, at feigning the keepers and he's got bags and bags of confidence i think he plays with more confidence than most people on that pitch so if things aren't working I think Poch needs to pull him back, maybe in the final third, pull Kane back, let Son do his stuff up front and, and see how that goes, all right? Um, Lloris, he's been our stalwart in goal. Uh, however, I don't think we should be frightened to drop him. I think Gazzaniga has more than proved his, his worth this season. He's played some blinding games and he is still a keeper that's learning. But like any keeper, he needs game time. Um, and I don't think it would do Lloris any harm to fight for his you know, fight for his place. You give him the captaincy, you feel like you've got to play him all the time. You know, okay, he's a World World Cup winning keeper and when he's on form, no one can touch him. But he's been on form for a while, right? And I think he feels a bit too comfortable in that role. So we really, you know, get, give Gazza those, those chances. He's hungry, all right? He wants to play. Um, certainly, Larissa's has made some howlers lately and I don't think Potts should be frightened to drop him. Even for a big game. You know what? Even for a big game like the North London Derby, which we've got coming up, I'd advocate that. I'm happy with Gazaniga. Buying players, this old chestnut, right, that's come back. If you're not going to buy players, Levy, right, if, you, if, if you're not going to buy players, then spend the money wisely, okay? Reward the players like Ericsson. Don't fanny around. Reward them with what they're worth. Reward them with what they could, not far off what they could get elsewhere, all right? Because I tell you that now, we're sending a message out to other teams to come and get him, the big clubs, all right? Since we gave Kane his pay rise, all right, a lot of people, obviously, yes, they know that he's 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 Spurs through and through, but that put a lot of people off, right? When they look at someone that's 
a team that's not doing too good. Then he's not winning things. He's getting to that age where he needs to start winning things and prove himself on the big stage. And then you couple that with him not being, you know, one of the top top high paid players in the Premiership. You're you're sending a message out to the Real Madrids and the cities. Yeah, come and get him. Come and get me. Right, because uh, if we let me tell you something now, if we lose him, we lose our playmaking, and and we cannot afford to do that. So Levy needs to needs to release the purse strings on that a little bit, and we need to get those contracts done. These long drawn out negotiations, uh, you know, it makes a player feel a little bit worthless, uh, and it and it it I think it also makes them feel undervalued, and it also makes them feel um, well. You know, it's bad for the team. It sends a message out. You know, everyone's talking about him possibly leaving, and that's not what we need to be concentrating on. We need to get business done, and uh, I'm not saying give them everything. I'm not saying you know keep bowing to their demands, but let's hit them with a nice, good, fair deal. Um, and if they if they're not interested, then fine. We have to look at look at selling them. Buying one um, player, I would say, if you're going to buy, if you're going to go in the transfer window, and we haven't got you know we've got restricted funds. Stop buying all these bit part players. Someone that could prop up the midfield. Someone that could do back up there. And buy one good player. All right. Um, you go out, you buy uh, an absolute playmaker, or you go out, you buy someone that's an absolute the best in his field, one of the best in his field, all right? Um, and that one amazing player can make more than a difference than four mediocre players, all right? We're not interested in these these little names. And I understand you know, we've got restrictions on who we can and can't buy and what wages we can and can't pay. However, sometimes you have to move heaven and earth and it works. it's a bit more cost-effective to buy one outstanding player and chase it and give it everything you can, all right, than bringing these little names in. As for not bringing anyone in, I think that's ridiculous, all right? We've seen... All right, we've had an injury-ravaged season, but it can happen, all right? And we're competing on all fronts. We were competing on, on on all fronts. We need a big squad. We need a deep squad. We need a quality squad. And more importantly, we need players to make other players fear for their space, all right? We need people to keep on form. And the only way we're going to do that is if we get people, you know, other people that are sitting there. People say they're not willing to come and sit on the bench. Well, you don't have to bring them in to sit on the bench. Let them know. If your game's good, you're going to you're gonna be on that pitch. It doesn't matter who you're replacing, all right? Don't matter, don't matter if you buy a striker. Yeah, if you're if you're confident of your ability and you and you you know you're on form and Kane's not, you're going to get Kane's spot. Simple as that. All right. I think you know not buying anyone. If the money for the stadium is an issue, then Lever needs to be honest about it, and he needs to say it. Right at the moment, you keep coming out with these 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 you know comments saying, oh, you know that we've got our payment program in place and our finance plans. It's not going to affect things on the pitch. Clearly, it's affecting things on the pitch. Right. Uh, and I think we all need to know where we stand on that. No one, no one, we'd understand. We're opening a massive stadium. We wouldn't, you know, but it's all this, you know, smoke screens that I think we're not happy with. Um, and again, it just it just leads to confusion because everyone thinks, well, what's going wrong? What's going wrong? You know, it can't happen. Um, on the money, I'm pretty pissed on this because I, I feel like, you know, if we were told it was going to take a couple of seasons to open, we'd have accepted it, right? Levy's taken our season ticket money, and I think he's not an idiot. He knew that stadium wasn't going to be ready. As far as I'm concerned, he's had a credit-free, uh, you know, an interest-free bank loan on us by taking our money up front, paying these extortion, you know, the, the inflated costs that we've had for the stadium, and gradually drip, 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 feeding it back match by match. Um, not so smart, Levy. I think a few of us know what you're doing there, mate. All right. Now listen, I've, I've mentioned a lot of things that I think are wrong, all right? We do need to uh, face up to this. It's, it's it's no good just pretending everything's great and saying, oh, I love my club. Yeah, I love my club. I've been a fan since as, as, I, as you know, long as I can even remember as a little boy, you know. I was visiting Tottenham in the 70s. Uh, I've always loved my club and I'll rant and rave when things are not happy, but I still love the club. Um, but I want to see something going on and I'm concerned at the moment. I really am concerned. The worst thing we can do is not take Champions League football into our new stadium, all right? Yes, I'm not a top four merchant. I understand there's more to top four and I'll take a trophy over top four every day. But we need to understand top four is important, all right? It's very important. The money, the clamour, people want to play in the Champions League and there's no point being in it if you're not going to, um, you know, if you're not going to compete to win, all right? So let's, let's, let's really push on that front, all right? Let's, let's, take, let's ensure, because let me tell you something now. If Arsenal beat us this weekend, we are one point ahead of them. One point with some very difficult games to come. And I can't see top four being secured for us. Hopefully we can we can retain it. But it's the way United and the others are storming forward and the way Chelsea played today, I don't think it's guaranteed at all. 
And so not take top four football to our new stadium would be absolutely catastrophic. It would be disastrous. Now, that being said, as usual, I love my Tottenham. I've got faith for the weekend. I've got the belief. We can beat Arsenal on our day. We've got to shake things up. We've got to wake up. So come on, you Spurs. Let's have this North London derby. Get in.